We are live. Welcome to Falcon and Winter Soldier Fox, Episode 3. So, as usual, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. And as usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by new rock star, screener, nervous, and screen crush. Now... Yeah, so Full Fad Videos just a few days ago did a video on Steve Rogers talking about, among other things, this show, and he pointed out, based on the characterization John Walker gets in episode two, it's possible that he'll become like Emil Blonsky. He didn't say that, but that was the footage he chose to use, but it's also possible he'll end up giving the shield to Sam willingly. I guess, based on the way John Walker responds to... The, the guy spitting at him in this episode, it's probably closer to Neil Blonsky. But I definitely agree. Based on episode two, you know, the the it's it's really open to anyway. And yeah, we open on an ad that talks about the post blip issues saying they'll help you back into a job, the GRC, which were mentioned in episode two. And yeah, so John Walker has found you know, someone who helped the Flag Smashers, and, like, when he, you know, raged out and, like, went, do you know who I am, I legit wasn't sure that he wasn't going to brutalize, maybe even kill this guy in response to him spitting in John's face. I think it was one of the Easter egg people who pointed out where Steve Rogers felt like being Captain America, re representing America like that, was a responsibility, John Walker is basically viewing it as something that gives him power. And Battlestar points out they've tried everything, they're all out of ideas. John Walker says, you know, okay, so Sam and Bucky do have leads, so we gotta, you know, catch up to them. Let's see, and yeah, you know, John Walker at the, the German's place was very kind of dangerous of American imperialism. They don't care who they hurt, what they destroy. You know, yet again, John Walker is that version of... Yeah, he represents that version of America where Steve, you know, was more of like the... the let me think, what's the saying? The, the city on the shining hill, so something like that, you know, inspiring people to be better. I like that Zemo immediately says the words that would work for the mind control of Bucky. And, you know, Bucky tells him that that doesn't work on me anymore. And Zemo isn't even surprised. There's the, you know, he's like, I know. I just wanted to see how you'd react. And that's, yeah. Because, cause, you know, he knows that Bucky's not going to, like, try to kill him or something. And even if he did try, he wouldn't get away with it. But it's like, you know, yeah, he's he's needling him. And he points out, at least you are not conscious for most of your imprisonment. I Yeah, basically, it... I don't think it's been said for sure, but I guess Zemo wasn't blipped. So he was in that prison for those five years. And, you know, he says, it was never personal. You were simply a means to an end. Which is why you came to me, which means you're desperate. Stepping on Logie's line here, but okay. Loki, sorry, not Logie. Zemo's great at getting into people's heads, especially yours. No offense. Offense. <laughs> and Sam and Bucky argue over trusting Zemo. And... Let's see. Yeah, just like people had guessed, Bucky and Zemo in Zemo Cell is indeed very cannibal, ha sorry, Hannibal, the cannibal, and Clarice in Silence of the Lambs. And we see that Bucky actually freed Zemo. And I, I get a very distinct Hitman, you know, Code Name 47, the, the franchise, vibe from Zemo's escape. Loving it. More of that, please. Because, like, you know, he causes a distraction, then he walks when he knows that no, oh, okay, so that's maybe closer to, like, Assassin's Creed. But anyway, you know, he puts on a uniform and, you know, hides from, from sight. And, 
you know, it was very careful to to be away from where people would see him when, yeah. Okay, so not only Hitman 47, but still. Yes. And it is, like, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, there's there's only so much he can do if he can only tell them things. You know, and it is, like, hypothetically, let's let's pretend that they hadn't you know, got him out of there, if Sam and Bucky just went to Madripoor and went to that bar, there's a decent chance that Shelby isn't going to take a meeting with them, she's just going to have them killed. And, you know, the, the before they get to go to Shelby's... Shelby? Well, whatever. Before they get to go there, you know, a bunch of guys were pointing guns at them, you know, I mean... Bucky can survive a lot, but bullets is not what, like, you know, he can, he can hold up his hand and, and, you know, the, the metal arm will help, you know, that, that one helps prevent him from being hit by bullets, but they're all around him. There's no way he's going to be able to get past all of them. You know, the only reason they got the offer, well, you know, Selby will see you now because it's Bucky and he has, sorry, it's Zemo, and he has a Winter Soldier. You know, the Winter Soldier on his own would not have been enough. Now, and, you know, people have also guessed from the trailers that, you know, when they're in Madripoor, the three of them are working together. If I may... No. <laughs> Zemo keeps trying to make his case, and they keep telling him to shut up. Really loving the unholy alliance between Zemo, Falcon, and Bucky. And we see that... Zemo has a lot of cars and a lot of weapons in those cars. And, you know, Zemo confirms he was worried that super soldiers out there could lead to another team like the Avengers. I'm a Baron, Sam. So he really is Baron Zemo in this. I, I really love him. You know, again, I, I no longer really doubt the MCU. They managed to make him look very similar to the comic, and good in live action, and just, because, yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, they, they managed to find a way, I mean, the dude wears a purple face mask with, with holes for his eyes, that is not easy to get to, you know, but once they got Vision, once we could take him seriously, you know, and by then we'd already accepted Groot, so, yeah. I mean, it's not like Zemo ever pretended to be poor. He didn't use a lot of wealth in Civil War because he was trying to be subtle. It's not a retcon, not that the MCU is immune for retcons. You touch that again, I'll kill you. Sam is so hurt that Bucky only liked, didn't love the Marvin Gaye, you know, Trouble Man soundtrack that he recommended to Steve. And even Zemo understands why it's incredible. You know, he's like, it perfectly sums, it, it's, you know, it, what was it? it sums up the African-American experience, is it? He's way out of line, but he's right. <laughs> and, you know, that was also something that people had... You know, and, and, yeah, Bucky even said, I, I liked it, you know? It's just... It, he, did, he didn't love it. He liked it, but, you know... And the Easter Egg people pointed out, it's because it's so personal for... It's, it's something that Sam shared with Steve. You know, it was... So, so it's a way to sort of... Do, do people say it's something to remember him by even when someone isn't dead? I'm, I'm going to go with that. It's something that Sam can use to remember Steve by. And the fact that Bucky, you know, it, it feels to Sam like Bucky is taking it away from, you know, so, and the, and, and you know, people had, actually, I forget if they had theorized, they, they had pointed out that Zemo had, sorry, Bucky having a book was similar to how Steve had a book. But now in this episode, it's confirmed that it's the same book and where Steve was using it to reconnect, to get back into the world, Bucky is using it to make amends for all the people he's killed. And Zemo confirms they are in fact going to Madripoor, as people had guessed from the trailer. And Carly's playing soccer with some young people in a GRC camp. They really do a great job humanizing the Flag Smashers, you know, uh, although in this one they also do show that, excuse me, 
they're willing to do some really extreme things, but, you know, they're not just saying this is for the people so that, you know, for, for sympathy. No, they are literally, you know, they, they look at GRC camps and they're like, things have to be better than this, you know, and yeah. It, it would be really easy to perceive them as hypocrites. You know, they're, they're saying, you know, oh, look at these government people going around killing people and taking um, resources from people when you could say, well, they seem to kill people, they're taking resources, you know, what makes them so special? But no, they really do, they do care about the individuals in these camps. Madripoor looks incredible and just like it feels like a real tangible place not just a series of sets and very carefully scouted locations when in reality that is ultimately what it is you know but it, it feels like a real place like ah uh, one second no never mind I don't remember but the the Themyscira in the Wonder Woman solo movie and the Wakanda in the Black Panther solo movie. And we see the, the graffiti on the wall. The power broker is watching. You know, we saw in the end credits. We didn't know for sure where it was. Now it's confirmed. It is, and, you know, these sort of people point out it's similar to the Big Brother is watching. And, and that is, you know, an, a, a scary comparison to be making that you know, the power broker is as powerful as the government in a totalitarian state. You know, he's, he is as, yeah, he really is paying, he's not paying attention, he's spying on people. The usual, and the bartender cuts open a snake and puts part of it in the liquor. And, and, you know, Sam is like, Simo told me I have to stay in character, this is important. Those lives are on the line. I'll stay in character. And swallows it and just, yeah, you know, holy crap, that was, you know, Zemo wouldn't have killed you to warn Sam that that was something that was probably going to happen, you know, and, and, I don't think we get a reaction shot from Zemo, but I can imagine he's like, take that, you know, put me in prison for, for years and years, you know, you get to drink snake guts. I love the bartender, the way he looks at them. Hypothetically, if the, if, you know, at, at some point there, maybe they'll eventually run out of, okay, that's not true, they're never going to run out of just, different stuff from the comics to do as Disney Plus shows. What I'm saying is, hypothetically, if they were to make a Disney Plus show of just this bartender, you know, every week, 30 minutes, and, you know, characters from the MCU show up at this bar, you know, order something from him, drink in front of him, and his reactions, I would watch that. I would watch several seasons of that. I, I really, is he's so just... Perfect. His, his acting, yeah. The power broker in Madripoor is judge, jury, and executioner. You know, you, you really have to be careful with someone who can be judge, Judy, and executioner. That's... And, and Bucky attacks the guy that comes out, and we get a brief fight with multiple people. Stay in character, or the whole bar turns on us. Selby will see you. You know, you should know better than to come into my bar and make demands. Not a, not a demand, an offer. Really loving seeing Zemo as so just... Yeah, there is, there is a bit of a Loki thing going on. You know, he is able to maneuver situations in, in a very, you know... I already love the character, but in Civil War, ultimately, we didn't see this side of him. And I'm really, really glad that we are. And, and it wouldn't have made sense to. Why would we? And Zemo offers Selby the Winter Soldier. 
and the code words to control him. So that's why he had to prove he was a Winter Soldier. That was the way to talk to Selby. And Selby gives some information about the Super Soldier Serum. And then Sam is called by Sarah and is told to answer it on speaker. And, you know, he just barely gets the call to work. But then near the end, Sarah calls him Sam. And, you know, Selby's like, who's Sam? I'm not 100% certain why it did work. Actually, no, never mind. I have notes about that later. And someone suddenly shoots Selby, and then there's like a billion... Was it dollar? I, th I think someone... One of the Easter egg people said it wasn't dollar, it was Bitcoin. But, yeah, I, I just saw billion and re reward for... You know, anyway, there's a... There's a... I'm, I'm going to go with dollar. There's a billion dollar reward for the killer of Selby, and everyone assumes that it's the three of them. You know, it's it's that thing of if you're not if you're not guilty, then why are you running? And you know, oh come on, Selby, up there she was completely safe. The only way you could possibly kill her was if you were in the same room as her. You know, so it's yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's not like you can walk up to her on the street. You know, if you want to get the the only way Zemo could get an audience with her was by convincing her that he had an active winter soldier on his side. You know, that's not, you, you don't just like, you're, no one's like searching the, the, like, like, ah, you, you don't just like stumble upon those, you know, they're, they're kind of rare. And we get another action scene of, you know, they, they have to get out of there. Very, very cool. Well, this is too perfect. Drop it, Zemo. You cost me everything. And Sharon is much more cynical now, you know, talking about that it's like, ah, what's it called? You know, the, the hero thing is hypocrisy, so. Oh, yeah, never mind. I have more notes about that later. But yeah, she's, she's hardened and she keeps saying his ass. And so she's on the run, and that's why she's a mad reporter. You know, she, she's like, you know, I because of his ass, I, I saved his ass and his ass. Now, yeah, I, I don't remember the, the exact line. It just amuses me that she keeps saying his ass. And, and you know, one of the Easter egg people said that, you know, where Steve Rogers was America's ass, John Walker is America's ass hat. And it, it is very clever. You know, she points out, I didn't have Avengers to, to, you know, help. And it is, you know, obviously part of the reason that she wasn't with the Avengers for those years is, like, they didn't, you know, the the, the people behind the, the, I don't know exactly whose decision it ultimately was, but the, peop the, the filmmakers did not want her to be in Infinity War. You know, ev similar to how Ant-Man and... Hawkeye work. So they they had to ah, what's the word? Yeah, you know, the so she couldn't be on the run with them. And if you want like an in-universe explanation, I could imagine that I'm I'm not sure the two of them did have that conversation, but if Steve Rogers and Sharon were talking about it, I could imagine that Steve would tell her. I don't know if I can protect you if you're, you know, if, if, yeah, if, if you're with me and, you know, some, some people might say, oh, well, you know, what about Black Widow? You know, does, what does, you know, obviously Sam has the wingsuit, but what does, Black, you know, what does Natasha have that Sharon doesn't? I'm almost certain that her training was a bit more vicious, like she's, like, Natasha is willing to do incredibly awful things where Sharon, you know, yeah. And, and one of these strike people pointed out, you know, it is it is a huge change because in Civil War, when we last saw Sharon, she was the moral center of the, you know, she, she said, you know, she, she explained her philosophy, which was Peggy's philosophy, and, 
you know, it basically encourages Steve to follow that same, you know, it was basically his philosophy as well, you know, don't, don't compromise, don't, don't make compromises where you legitimately feel, you know, if you see something that's unethical, don't just put up with it, force them to change it. And now, you know, she's very, yeah. And, you know, and she says, you know, I have a place in Hightown, you'll be safe there. Makes sense, we're told that Hightown and Lowtown don't exactly mix, so Lowtown killers aren't going to get them. Although, actually, did they go to Lowtown for the cargo? The, the, or was that, st or did the Lowtown? No, wait, yeah, actually, the, yeah, some of, some of the Easter egg people, you know, had, theorize that the people that Sharon fought were sent by her so that there would be a sort of ticking clock on the, you know, so that the, the three of them, the, the three guys, wouldn't just stay forever talking to Dr. Nagel. Although if she paid someone to blow up the place, how could she be sure they wouldn't get hurt? She has become aware of some of the Deadpool. She's, she's meta-aware. She knows they have plot armor. Fair enough. Now, but, but yeah, you know, it makes a lot of sense that she, you know, the, the thing of, like, she, she's, she, she has this artwork that's extremely expensive, and because of that, you know, because that is what someone in her position would be, you know, she, she would have the knowledge and the ability to do that, and at that point, it's just a matter of, do you think it's okay? Can you rationalize it as being something that's okay for you to do? And she got there, you know. But it makes a lot of sense, you know. Matrabor is basically where you go if if you're being chased by the government, you know. So that's, yeah. Let's see. Really loving the interactions between Sh Sharon, Zemo, Sam, and Bucky. Wow, she's kind of awful now. Not all young actresses could be convincing as badass, but Emily Van Camp is doing really a great job. But yeah, Sharon basically believes the hero thing is hypocrisy. Yet again, the show brings up how America does not take care of its heroes, one of the main themes of the show. And yeah, it, it really... You know, like last time we saw her, she was literally, she realized that she was going to have to go on the run. She And she was giving the, the, you know, Steve the shield back, Sam the wingsuit back and such. And yeah, you know, then she hears that, hears, sees that Sam gave up the shield, even though Steve, you know, gave it to him, passed it to him. And... Yeah, you know, she, she she reads that as him believing it's hypocrisy. I really like the filming and editing of the dance club scene. It really puts you right there in the middle of the dancing. And, you know, Zemo dancing is... Yeah, I like it. There are a lot more jokes involving Zemo in this than Civil War, but then this is more of a body, buddy comedy, and I, I think it works. And... I guess basically every MCU villain has some comic relief, comic relief moments, except for the ones that just don't have enough screen time to get to that point. I'm not sure I can think of a single MCU villain who never has any comic relief moments. You know, early on it seemed like... Uh, one second. In, in Infinity War, Thanos doesn't, but then in Endgame you know, the, the, him trying to snap, and then, yeah, so, but yeah, I'm really glad that they didn't try to do comic relief with Zemo in Civil War. It's not like the movie has no jokes. I quite love the, the dad joke when, you know, Chadwick Boseman, R.I.P., and I'm afraid I don't remember the, the actor who plays his father, but, you know, the, you know, basically, T'Challa and Natasha are standing there talking about the, the Accords, and he says, two people in a room 
can get more done than a hundred. And then his father walks up and he's like, unless they're moving a piano. That is such a dad joke. Like that is like, he's, he's standing there talking about like basically his philosophy. And then the dad comes in and just drops such a dad joke. And it's it just absolutely love it. Cause yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You know, it's not like there were no jokes in Civil War. And they go into the container, and at first it appears to be empty, but there's a fake wall, which, you know, makes a lot of sense. That way no one will, you know, just manage to, to find it with if they don't know that that's where they're supposed to look. You know, the, I, I didn't count, but there's got to be dozens, maybe a hundred or more of these shipping containers. No one's going to go container to container to container if they don't know exactly where to look and that there's something incredible in there. You know, and why would you, you know, it's, why would you look for super soldier serum in a shipping container, you know, so. And, let's see. Yeah, see, I'm not 100% certain how the call between Sarah and Sam went so well. Like, did she pick up on him needing her to play along, maybe? Because, like, you know, the, the, once they... Once she says the, you know, the issue with the banker, then he says something like, I'm, what was it? Was it he's going to kill the banker or he's extorting the banker or something? You know, he says something that would fit with the, you know, the, the guy he's posing as. And Sarah doesn't say, what are you talking about? And yeah, I just, I don't know. I get that she was distracted at the end of the call, but was she distracted even when he said, because it's like, I mean, I guess I could understand why, like, she knows he's a good guy, so if she hears him say something like that, she would know that it's, that there's something, it's, that he's not, he's, you know, he's, he's having to put up a front for someone. But then why did she say his name? Instead of just saying, I'll call you back. But yeah, they, they get to Dr. Nagel, start questioning him. And apparently in the comics, he, he also worked on Isaiah's blood, but he was literally there in the lab with, you know, he, he didn't just get it from Isaiah. He, or, ah. Like he, he was, was he one of the people experimenting on Isaiah, I think, in the comics. So, yeah. So it's, it's a good way of bringing him in, in a way that, you know, obviously they have, they kind of need for this character, they, they didn't really want, like, a very, very old doctor, so they, they had to make it that he's, and they didn't want him to have been working on it for as long, I guess. Yeah. And it does make sense, you know, what was it, the CIA started paying him, they, they started up a, a program where he could do this, create the super soldier serum, and then the snap happened, and he disappeared for five years, and when he came back, the, the program had been shut down, but the, the power broker had the, yeah, and he got the information because he's able to get information, the, excuse me, that, it's usually extremely difficult for people to get who aren't supposed to have the information. And, yes. And, you know, at first he doesn't want to talk, but then he recognizes Bucky. Really love seeing Sharon beating up bounty hunters. And Zemo brands, you know, yeah, brandishes a gun very subtly so the others can't see it. And, see. yeah, and, and Zemo shoots Nagel and the bounty hunter shoots a rocket at them. And Zemo escapes in the chaos. 
I honestly thought that he was just straight up gonna get away from the the titular duo. I guess he figured that he's not going to get more useful information out of Nagel. They do now have leads to go on, and he's worried that Dr. Nagel might tell someone that he told them, you know, the information told them, and, and it's possible he'll even tell that same information to someone else, possibly John Walker. And, and you know, Sam and Bucky argue while they're pinned down, very buddy comedy. And Zemo puts on the mat. I really love the shot of him. You know, we see from behind us, he's got it in his hand, and then he puts it on. And it looks so good on him. It's incredible. And he starts killing bounty hunters like it's going out of style. Not gonna lie, when I was watching Everwood back when it first aired, if you had told me that Emily Van Camp would become a badass action hero, you know, let's see, what was that, 17, I feel like it started 17 years ago. I'm not sure I would have believed you. I always liked her, but I, yeah, she's really transformed. And Sharon doesn't join them, so she still doesn't have that pardon, but, you know, tells, yeah, she, you know, says, you got to get me that pardon you promised me. And that does make sense, you know. Let's see, they were going to, like, Germany afterwards, I think. And the, yeah, that would be, you know, basically, no one in Madripoor is going to give her up. You know, there's no extradition there, but Germany is not going to... So, actually, let's see, was Germany where she was wanted? Or was it... I, I guess it's probably the American government. And anyway... You know, the, the Germany is not going to deny America. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to very briefly say before I forget, apparently the actress who plays Ao, I'm afraid I forget her name right now, but she's actually she, she, German and like speaks German and apparently sings German. So, yeah, not... I, I think I meant to look up if and, and actually see you know, if I could find some of her singing in here, but I, I forgot. But yeah, so when she says there at the end of this episode, you know, she, she's, she's speaking German when she says, I'm here for Zemo. I mean, she, does she not know that Bucky speaks English? Or is it maybe to avoid, like, attracting attention? Or maybe it's just that, you know, the fact that the actress speaks German. Oh, actually, I didn't, I didn't notice if um, Brühl... Daniel Brühl, who plays Zemo, does do the the dubbing for his German for uh, yeah for the German dubbing. He he dubs his own character since he also speaks fluent German. I'm not sure if she does as well, but it would make sense. Anyway, you're not going to move that seat up, are you? No. Switching the roles from the same scene in Civil War. Very cool. And Carly and the guy talk about what they used to want to do when they grew up. This world is ours. It should have been, was it Mama? Uh, something. We have to do it for those kids in that camp. And John and Battlestar are at the prison, and John is certain that they intentionally freed Zemo. And Sam and Bucky discuss the shield and Isaiah's blood samples. You had six months of supplies, sat there in that building. Don't you understand? We're fighting for our lives. And Carly's car blows up and they drive off in the other car. At first I thought it was the power broker, but no, Carly herself blew it up, saying this is the only language these people understand. And Bucky takes a walk while Zemo and Sam go into the apartment. And Bucky finds... What were they called again? Um, I'm sorry, I, f I forget, but the, the little round things. Something beads from Black Panther. Yeah. And follows their trail. I kind of have to figure that Ao wanted him to find her. That that was basically because... 
I don't know. I, I feel like the 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 Dora Milaje don't do something just like accidentally. You know, they're super spies too. So, yes. and another episode ends on a dramatic reveal of character. And yeah, so Ao, the general from Wakanda. You know, she she's in Civil War and the Black Panther solo movie. I'm not sure that we've seen her. Yeah, I, th I think that might be the ones, but yeah. And, you know, she says she's there for Zemo. She's almost definitely there to get revenge for King T'Chaka. Zemo did kill him in Civil War. And, you know, you could say, oh, but that wasn't personal. It's not like he tripped and fell and set off an explosion. You know, he, he did bomb that building full of UN ambassadors intentionally. And, you know... I, I noticed that the actress played a senator in the first in the yeah in the first Wonder Woman solo movie. So she's in both the MCU and the DCU as someone highly educated and capable. Very cool. And it, I think she can her character in Wonder Woman can probably kick ass too. I mean, it's kind of their their thing. The basically every adult woman in the which I guess is is contradict uh, no sorry it's it's not necessary for me to get that detail i can just say the people of the mascara because they're all grown women now but but yeah i she can probably kick ass as well so that's really cool and when they cast her for that she had already appeared in civil war and you know that's actually i'm not sure i've mentioned that in another video but I really I really love you know she's like she and and T'Challa are, are leaving and Natasha is standing in front of the the car that they're about to get into and Ao like walks up to her and she's like move or you will be moved and it's just like holy crap I'm aware that a member of the Dora Milaje can almost definitely beat up Natasha, although, you know, you know, as as the child would say, as entertaining as that might be, you know, it would be a, it would be one hell of a fight. But yeah, I'm I'm sorry, Natasha, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to defeat a Dora Milaje member, and you know, Ao knows who Natasha is. This is after the events of the second Captain America solo movie, the files of what Natasha has done is out there. It's public information. Ao, as a general, of course she knows about the potential enemies. She knows exactly who Natasha is, and she doesn't skip a beat. Like, and, and Natasha, I mean, she must be trusting that, yeah, but basically she trusts that T'Challa is gonna hear her out. Instead of just sending Ao at him, at her, or rather letting Ao. And but but yeah, you know this is the only time that Ao has, or yeah, basically this is the only time that someone from Wakanda has been able to get to Zemo without convincing the Germans that he should be released from prison. And how the heck they would manage such a thing, I have no clue. So they've been waiting for this moment with bated breath for years now. I mean, I suppose you could say that T'Challa himself, you know, he chose to to give up Zemo rather than take him back to Wakanda. I think that was, excuse me, in, you know, he wanted to have a good relationship with them. But now that Zemo is not in, in prison, and yeah. But yeah, if you watch the very end of the end credits, the part where there's listings for who did the voices in other languages, you know, for the German version, Dan Daniel Brühl does do the voice for Baron Zemo since he's fluent in German. How very red alert to Udo Kier of him. Now, this episode spaced out the action scenes more than the first two episodes, but there still was a room for a ton of character moments and plots, so they're still doing really, really great at that. 
I swear, the moment that I legitimately feel a Disney Plus MCU series makes a significant mistake, I will be honest, I will come out and say it in the corresponding video. It just hasn't happened yet. And to be fair, we're still early, but the MCU movies have had, you know, let's see, what is it by now? I guess we can't technically call, count anything after 2019. So, so yeah, you know, 10 years, I guess, is the... Wait, no, sorry, 11 years. And they really didn't let me down very much at all. I, I understand and respect. Other people felt let down by parts of the MCU in those 11 years, but I, I find extremely little to actually... Now, this is not the first episode where the Flying Smashers engage in violence, but it is the first time we see them do it without it being in self-defense. And I think this is the first time we've seen them kill anyone. And it's almost I'm almost 100% certain it's the first time we've seen them kill someone who's completely unable to defend themselves. You know, Carly left those, you know, she tied those guys up, left them in there, then blew up. The, the, you know, one of these strike people said, we're not, we're not, we don't know for sure if someone died in that explosion. I think the idea is supposed to be that at least, you know, someone died in that explosion. So, you know, we are seeing her slowly doing increasingly violent, evil things in the name of the cause. She's being radicalized. And that is sadly, you know, a lot of people start out fighting the good fight, fighting for a, a just cause, but... You know, after a while, they end up doing some really, you know, I I think it's it's easy to, you know, to, to empathize with the, uh, I guess, revolutionaries. The, the revolutionaries of the French Revolution, but, you know, the, the fact that they, you know, they were literally starving to death, and the royalty wasn't doing anything to, to really, you know, stop that. And you know, apparently, it's not the, the, the you know, the, the story that, ah, one second, I'm running out of my time. I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, but yeah, the, the, uh, Kirsten Dunst portrayed her in a Sofia Coppola movie, you know, Apparently, she didn't actually say if they, you know, let them eat cake. But, it, you know, apparently it's something that she might as well have said. She is the type of person who would have said that, you know. Anyway, so, you know, you can understand why they want to get rid of them. And, you know, the I could understand those who would say, if they're going to let us die, then it's only right for us to execute them so that, you know, they aren't continuing to let us die. But they also did kill children. You know, they didn't, not all of the people they executed were adults. They killed children because they figured that these children would grow up and then become a problem to them later, you know. So, yeah, it, it's sadly a, a lot of, movements like that and you know at some point start doing some really extreme things whoever did assassinate shelby and put a bounty on the heads of the trio must be working for the power broker trying to cover up the super soldier serum i hesitate to say it's the power broker himself i i'm not sure he would like personally be doing that but you know we already know that he sends people to kill those that, you know, he, he also tried to have killed the Flag Smashers. And, excuse me, let's see, and the, the Flag Smashers, yeah, so anyway, the, the, but, but yeah, you know, it's a way to keep the Super Soldier Serum from getting out. And, let's see. I guess that does bring up why didn't they kill Selby 
before this, I mean, other than then there wouldn't be an episode. Let's see. For one thing, it might be that the power broker has enough faith in his people that they'll be able to. And, you know, he also didn't manage to prevent the Flag Smashers from stealing the Super Soldier Serum from him. Now, the, let's see. Possibly, maybe they didn't know that Selby, Shelby did know about the Super Soldier Serum. I guess that's a possibility. And because they're basically, you know, I guess, I mean, they, yeah, they must have been listening in on that conversation to know to kill her. So maybe they're always listening in on Selby's conversations. And this was the one time she brought up some sort of, you know, yeah, Super Soldier Serum. I, I think that might be, anyway, as some of the Easter egg people pointed out, the, you know, Carly talks about, you know, the, the serum was that she said she felt like her blood was burning or something like that, which, you know, yeah, that's very similar to Steve's experience with it. And let's see, that is everything I had written down. I'm trying to think, was there something that I forgot to write? down that I haven't. Right, one of the, at least one of these strike people suggested that maybe, you know, AO actually knows some way to, like, turn Bucky's mind control back on. I mean, it's possible. I, I definitely could see how, you know, she doesn't, like, immediately attack him or anything. I could imagine that she thinks that they have a decent chance of being able to talk, maybe not Sam, but Bucky, into letting, you know, yeah, letting Wakanda take Zemo. Since the, ah, let's see, what's it called? Yes, yeah, since, since they did remove the, the mind control. And let's see. Yeah, and and they. So so basically, let's see. Ao. Was. Yeah, you know the, the the fact that Zemo was able to escape prison. You know that Ao or someone else in the Dora Milaje was monitoring if Zemo was still in prison. And so the moment that he disappeared, they started looking into it, and I forget, I'm not 100% sure we see it, but Bucky almost must have, like, signed in. I think you have to do that if you want to go talk to a prisoner. You have to, you know, write your, your name, and, and the like, they'll put, like, the date and time or something by it. And so, yeah, Ayo went there, asked to see that book. And, you know, she maybe even said, you know, some, maybe there's some kind of law that says that, you know, someone from Wakanda has to be given a certain amount of, ah, what's it called? You know, the, the, you have to work with someone from Wakanda if they come and want to talk about Zemo. And, you know, maybe that was the agreement. Maybe T'Challa gave the Germans Zemo since, you know, some of the, the things he did were done in Germany. So it's their turf. And T'Challa said, we don't have to make a thing out of whether or not this is extradition or whether you get to deal with him. However, if one day he managed just to escape, you have to work with my people in trying to track him back down. And once she knew that it was Bucky, let's see, yeah, I mean, it did, I guess, unless she knew about the super soldier serum in Germany, hmm, is there some chance that the Wakandans can actually track Bucky? 
Oh, actually, holy crap. They can probably track the arm, can't they? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And so she, you know, she realized, okay, they're going into that building. And so she, you know, she, she went close to it and she dropped the kimono beads. That's what they're called. She started dropping these kimono beads and then hid and waited for Bucky to, to come up. Yeah. So, so yeah, really, really excited to see what is going to, yeah, so that's actually, we're, we're halfway through. I'm really going to miss the show uh, when, when it goes off the air. I, I suppose I could briefly say, I haven't seen Twin Peaks myself, but if you're watching this video and you're, you really badly miss WandaVision, it took some inspiration from Twin Peaks, so... If you haven't already watched Twin Peaks or had it spoiled by someone, you know, you could watch Twin Peaks and, you know, have, have a new thing to, to get super into. I guess, is there anything else? Right, I want to briefly say, okay, so in the last episode I, I joked that maybe each episode would end, sorry, in the video I did talking about the last episode, I did, did joked that Maybe every single episode will end with a dramatic reveal of a character. And, you know, now we're, we're three, three for three. Three out of the, you know, so, so let's see. I, I you know, I, th I think I joked that maybe one of them would be Sharon. But she has shown up and not. But yeah, so let's see. There's, there's three episodes or maybe two if the th very last one doesn't bring in, yeah. Let's see who's left. There's the power broker and actually, yeah, I'm not sure who else. I guess it's not impossible that one of them will be Wolverine since Matt Rapport is, you know, he, he, he was there for a while in the comics. I do think that could be that could be epic. Like if the last episode of the of the miniseries is like, you know, they they're, you know, they they dealt with the the super soldier serum or something, and like they, uh, let's see, they're, yeah, you know, so so you know, Sam has the the shield and is being sworn in as the new Captain America, and Bucky is like going to Wakanda to be the White Wolf, and, like, let's see, some, ah, let's see, what would be a, yeah, they could, they could have a, you know, they could briefly have Wolverine appear in a bar in Madripoor, and they, I mean, they could essentially do, like, the, the, his cameo in, ah, is that a spoiler? I mean, at this point, either I go ahead and say, okay, I, I, you could probably figure out which of the movies, what cameo I'm talking about. Wolverine's cameo in one of the X-Men movies where he's in a bar, you know, some, something along those lines. And, you know, he may be like inquires about the, the, you know, Let's see. The, maybe maybe the super soldiers or, or something. Yeah. I hope we get to see more of Matt Rapport. It was really really cool in in this episode, and yeah, like it felt like Matt Rapport exists and is a place where you can go and just film. You know, like it's just yeah. I th think that is everything I have to say about this episode. So I hope you enjoyed watching. As I enjoy watching the recording, I'll catch you next time.